Oh, this is so important, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is so important. This should probably have been first. Okay, so yeah, my husband's not here for me to blame. <laughs> I'm on my own, okay? I'm going out on my own. I'm gonna go out on my own limb. I may need another sip of lavender latte. That's what we don't want. Nobody really wants a monotonous space. That doesn't sound like a goal. Calm down, woman. They don't wanna see excited Valentina. And I'm like, outer, yay. <laughs> Thank you to Remarkable for being today's video sponsor. Hello and welcome to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today we're going to be talking about decor mistakes that we make outdoors. And I'm so excited about this, I almost can't stand it because I have been obsessing over my outdoor space. Well, I've been obsessing over the indoor as well, but when you start getting the indoor ready for spring and you start getting excited, it's really hard for that excitement not to spill over into your outdoor spaces. So today I thought it'd be really fun to talk about some of the outdoor mistakes that we so often make. Don't forget to also hit subscribe because I do not want you to miss out on the outdoor space getting made over and all the fun that's gonna come with that. We've also got some incredible projects that we're working on and those are all gonna be coming to you very soon. So hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments if you get excited about your outdoor space or maybe this video will encourage you. Maybe it's time to really throw some effort at it. Let me know down in the comments. Let's jump in. Okay, the biggest biggest mistake that I think so often most of us are truly guilty of is that we don't really think through the purpose of our outdoor space. If we think about the purpose, we think about what we should do or what we've seen others do. And I think a lot of times we just forget to think about how we are going to use the space. A lot of times people will think, I need a big table. I've seen in the magazines that there should be a seating area. And I think you really need to think through how you will enjoy your outdoor space. A lot of times you may need multiple purposes and you may need to divide your space into little zones. Even if it's a small space, you can divide it up into zones in order to be able to create a space that really works for your own purpose and for what you want to do in your outdoor area. You may not even want to sit for very long. You may not be a sit and linger kind of person, so maybe you wanna turn your deck or your patio into an outdoor garden and you fill it up with flowers and, and herbs and you just go for just packing in all that, the herbs and plants and you just, yeah, go for it. I wanted to take just a moment and share with you one of my favorite, absolute favorite tools for planning out my, not only my outdoor spaces, but any of my spaces actually, and it's something that I've been actively using right now to plan out my own, and they also happen to be our video sponsor, and that is Remarkable. This little baby is actually a digital notepad. It is incredible. It replaces your need for any kind of paper. It is incredible. I absolutely love it. With the quick push of a button, I have all of my notes in here and it has all kinds of amazing features. I use this for everything from my honey-do list, which is up here right now. You can see here how I've got multiple things saved. I can create little notes. I can also use it. See, I am actually using it. I've just sketched out quickly. This is not something super official, but I don't know about you, but I'm a doodler, doodler. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but uh, I do like to doodle and I like to just sort of sketch out my thoughts. A lot of times I'll just be standing with a client or if I'm trying to show my husband what I'm thinking, I'll just very quickly just kind of sketch out. I've found that it was a really, it was a struggle. If I had created something and I want to send it to somebody and I've written it on a piece of paper, it kind of isn't the same. Do you know what I'm saying? So instead, this literally replaces the notepad, which I've always carried around with me, and it feels like a notepad. It feels just like paper. The pen is so comfortable to hold. I love this because it helps me think better by eliminating distractions. No notifications, social media, or email. It's just me and my Remarkable too. But I can do everything from room design to grocery list, and then you can also 
uh, present it with a screen share. You can send it by email, which I sent this to my husband yesterday. You can also convert it into a text and send it. It's just amazing. So I highly recommend that you check it out. I'm gonna leave the website for Remarkable down below. This is the Remarkable 2 and it is fabulous. Let's get back to talking about designing your spaces as well. The next thing I think that is really, really important and a mistake that's very easy to make is to forget about scale. How high of a seat back do you need? Do you want something that's really high? Do you want something that's really low? Restoration Hardware sells a lot of really low outdoor furniture. And then if you look at somewhere maybe like Pottery Barn or West Elm, West Elm is probably low as well, but Pottery Barn has more traditional items and they would traditionally have higher furniture. And so it's not just how big the furniture is itself, but it's also the seat heights, the back heights, the cushion heights. It's how big of a space does it actually take up? I, I know that when we were younger and I was really just getting started in decorating our spaces, I would just go and pick out whatever there was and I'd say, it looks like it'll fit. <laughs> so that's not really the best way of going about it. It can just cause you a lot of returns. It can cause you a lot of stress. And if you can avoid all that, I say, let's just avoid it. So the main thing that you should do is to first of all, just get your measuring tape out and just actually measure out your space, your width, your length, even the height, because the height of whatever is around that area can really affect how that space feels to you. There's a lot of decisions to be made, but that's where the real fun is, is discovering what is going to be the best thing for your space and creating an outdoor room and area for yourself that you're going to absolutely love sitting in. Oh, this is so important, you guys. <laughs> this is so important. This should probably have been first, but I think that one of the biggest mistakes that we make so often when we're talking about outdoor spaces is not creating any kind of interest. When I think about the average outdoor space and the average outdoor shops that you can go to, I'm thinking about some local ones where you go in and everything just kind of looks the same. Everything comes in a matching set. It, you buy the whole entire set and everything matches and that's all a lot of times what people will do for their outdoor spaces. They don't think through the plants, the focal point, the, the fountains, the all the things that you can add to an outdoor space to really take it from just being a sea of outdoor furniture that all matches to something that really catches your eye and is extraordinary. So some of the things that can help you create interest, I did kind of mention them kind of briefly, but I would think through, first of all, can you create a little bit of a focal point maybe with a water feature of some sort? You can also create a little bit of interest with a great coffee table. You can create interest with the shape of your furniture. You can also think through maybe some trellising or some different kind of plants that you can use. I think that outdoor sculptures are incredible, that it, they just look so cool. And I maybe have ordered a few for my own house that I'm super excited about. I'm gonna be sharing all of this with you. So yeah, stay tuned, subscribe, you know the drill. But I can't wait to share it all with you because I've just had so much fun, just really just unleashing myself on my own outdoor space and dreaming up what's gonna make it just feel so interesting and inviting and just powerful. Yeah, my husband's not here for me to blame. <laughs> I'm on my own, okay? I'm going out on my own. I'm gonna go out on my own limb. I may need another sip of lavender latte. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, biggest mistake that you can make I'm so I'm like, oh, it's just, it doesn't sound nice, but I promise if you'll hang with me, I'll tell you what I'm, talk, what I'm talking about. I think it's a huge mistake to cheap out on your outdoor living space. Now, I know that the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear somebody say that is, well, isn't that nice? Wouldn't we all love to be able to just spend thousands and thousands of dollars on outdoor living furniture and all this stuff? And I'm like, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about because I myself, have saved up for an eternity to be able to, but not an eternity. Oh, I've been married for almost 24 years and I just now got my first nice outdoor seating furniture. It took a long time to get there, 
But I tried really hard, even when I had no money to really do a lot with, to choose really carefully about the pieces that I did purchase. So I actually think that one of the best places, you guys are gonna be like, whoa, of course, this is Valentina. But one of the best places to shop for outdoor furniture is actually Ikea. The reason why is that I've had chairs, my little dining chairs from, from Ikea. I have literally owned them for, I think at least 12 years. And they look brand new. They do a really good job on their coating that they put on their aluminum pieces and on their metal pieces, and they do a really good job with them. The other thing is, is that I also chose something that wasn't going to really age. If you choose wood pieces and you don't have enough money to invest in teak, then a lot of times what's gonna happen is that if those pieces are sitting out in the pouring rain and in the snow and all the elements, they're going to start falling apart really quickly. So. Cheapening out isn't about price, but it's about looking for the best quality that you can afford. I also think that you can actually get a lot more for your money. And I've just now realized that because I did buy myself a really nice set. And, and we were sitting out there the other night and I realized there's a huge difference between this set and what I had from Wayfair. Okay, so what are the differences? First of all, the cushion is actually comfortable to sit on. We hadn't sat in our outdoor space basically since we've moved in. We've literally never really sat out there because it's so uncomfortable to sit on the furniture. And investing in something that was from uh, Summer Classics actually, this gave us a really nice thick cushion. It gave us a really well-made cover for them. The metal is really high quality, the, it's sturdier. There's something about it. And so I, yeah, trust me, I had to say forever, but I think there is something to be said about saving up and investing in something because I think sometimes it really can pay off. Okay, so I'm gonna follow up that last one with something that seems completely contradictory, but I think it's a mistake to leave your outdoor space completely empty. An outdoor living area, a lot of times, is something that you look at out of your living room, out of your bedroom. It's something that you're looking at. And I think leaving it empty is kind of, it's a little bit depressing. I think it is. I think it's kind of sad to look out and it's empty and just kind of lonely. Instead, I think the best thing to do is think through the ultimate, ultimate plan of what you want. Sit down and come up with the most amazing plan you've ever come up with for your outdoor space. Then go and buy a few of the items as you work on your budget to be able to build and build and build. So even if you're just getting started and you don't have all the money to do it at once, don't leave it empty. I think that that's just such a missed opportunity. I think that it is a huge mistake to, yeah, I know, I'm like, oh, am I gonna say this? Yep, I'm gonna say this. My husband's not even here, I can't blame him, it's all on me, but I think it's a mistake to buy too many plastic items for your outdoor space. I have found over the years that those plastic items, they're just easy, they're usually quick, and they are super affordable, but a lot of times you're just gonna end up replacing them. They really just don't give you that high, high design kind of look. They really just devalue your entire space. So if you don't have a huge amount of money, which is usually why I think most people would buy those things, it's less convenience, more about price. There's a few ways to get around this. First of all, like I said before, check out places like Ikea. I, I really feel confident recommending their outdoor pieces. Their wood won't hold up as well, but their metal pieces definitely will. You can also, I do this all the time, I can't drive by an estate sale without popping my head in. And most people are standing around in the kitchen area and they're looking at the furniture and I'm like straight back to the deck, to the outdoor area and to the garage because what I'm looking for are the planters. I think that you can get really, really great planters and outdoor pieces at places like estate sales, garage sales. You buy an outdoor set even from somewhere like that, you can 
get them off Facebook Marketplace. There's so many places that you can look that you can get something that's just extraordinary and it will really elevate your space and really give you a unique vibe in your area. And you're not having to necessarily, you may even spend less than what you would have on that plastic piece. Speaking of buying things that are easy and convenient, let's talk about the fact that buying everything new is actually kind of, I don't know, it just tends to look a little bit sterile if every single thing in your outdoor space is brand new. There's something that happens when the elements are allowed to age what you have. And I know a lot of you that are like, I got some old stuff sitting out there, got plenty of age. I'm like, I know what you mean. Sometimes the sun and the elements can be very brutal and they can really just damage what you have. But to only have new furniture, everything that's like, I feel like it's this very sterile idea that everything is sprayed, everything's gonna last forever, and it's like so protected that it's it almost looks too shiny. <laughs> it just looks too spanking new. And if you buy an outdoor, if you buy outdoor furniture that does have those kind of coatings on it, that's a great idea in order to make your stuff last. But then you might need some planters that have some age and patina to them. You can also buy some really cool, those little garden spheres. I'm so into them. I have them inside, I have them outside. You could also think about a table that has, it just looks more worn. And so as it wears, it just sits even better outside. Uh, those are just some easy ways to be able to just add some age and some warmth and patina to your space. Because if it's all super shiny and new, it just, almost feels a little too sterile. So yeah, have a little bit fun and don't worry, outdoor spaces are supposed to feel a little bit natural and a little bit rustic, I think. Don't you? What do you guys think? Do you like it to have like a little bit of patina? You guys let me know down in the comments. I think it's a huge mistake to buy a set of furniture and to leave it as a set. So I'm saying that and I have sets of furniture. I don't think you have to have all mismatched, mixed match, mismatched. <laughs> How do you say that? <laughs> mismatched furniture. I don't think that you have to have a, a, everything different. Nothing matches. I don't, I don't think that's, that's definitely not what I'm saying. I think it's nice to have some pieces that do match. It's okay to have matching chairs and maybe even the matching table. But I think if you just go and just literally buy all the exact same thing, the, the, t the chairs match, the table matches, that matches the sofa, it matches the love seat, which matches the coffee table, which matches the ottoman. And you just have like a sea of all of one material out in your outdoor room. It can just feel like it doesn't have anything interesting to look at. There's nothing to really break the eye. I think you just become a little bit blind to the space and you just sort of gloss over it. Whereas if you bought one of those sets, I bought those sets, and what I do a lot of times is I'll take some of the pieces out and maybe I'll either reuse them in a different room, I'll use them in a different way, I'll think of something to do with them. I think one of the easiest things to do if you've bought outdoor lounge furniture is actually to mix up the coffee table, mix up the side table. If you have a dining area, don't match the chairs to the table if you can help it. Now, if you've already done that and you're like, oh no, what do I do? It's okay for these things to match. It's not the end of the world. But you might wanna think about how you could put a beautiful planter on your table. You could maybe add some cushions that will kind of mix it and break it up just a little bit. Sometimes the outdoor umbrella, if you have a space for one of those in your table, that can really help break up something that might feel just a little bit monotonous. That's what we don't want. Nobody really wants a monotonous space. That doesn't sound like a goal. So instead, just think about how you can mix it up just a little bit and give yourself, give yourself something that's really interesting to look at. This is such a huge mistake and such an important one. But I think it's super important to not forget your greens. I think it's a great idea to have plants in your outdoor spaces because it just adds a lot of life, it adds color, it adds interest, and of course, 
It adds nature. Now what you put out there is really where the fun begins because so much of this depends on what style you're creating in your outdoor space. If you're going for a more Mediterranean look, you might have a lot of citrus and maybe an olive tree. If you're gonna go for something that's really classic and maybe super French feeling, you might want something, maybe you'll have rows of boxwoods. If you want something that feels really soft, and of course I'm in the South, so Southern America, one of the things that we have so many of are the hydrangea and the gardenias and azaleas. There's so many options that I think that it's a lot of fun to really think through what kind of plants you want to add to your outdoor space and come up with the entire plan, not just the furnishings, but also the plants as well. Finally, we've kind of beaten around this one a little bit, but I have to just say it before we close, but I think that one of the most important things to do is to really, what is the mistake? <laughs> the mistake is to use only one style. I think that it's a lot more fun to mix your styles. I think that from what I've heard from most of you, you like a lot of different styles, you like a lot of different things. And I think that's where, again, that interest just really comes in using lots of different things, creating different styles, playing with different genres. That's why I actually don't have the stack of books here. I have been perusing an entire, I have a stack of gardening books and I don't ever look at just one style. I look at all different styles and I take from all different things to really create something that's just so unique to me and something that I feel, it is this idea of the art of living and this the art of creating this sort of life that we are living. I don't know, there's something about it. And I think that that's really cool. And I think that when you limit yourself that you only have to use one style, you have to use this one set, your whole space can just end up feeling a little bit monotonous and you, maybe you can't figure out what it is about it that just doesn't feel right. A lot of times it's these little things that are really easy fixes and I think that they will have a huge impact not only on the visual space itself but also in the way that you sit and you enjoy and the way that you feel and you'll be more motivated to actually enjoy your outdoor space and I think that it's really important that we have those areas that we can escape to and get out and breathe that fresh air and have those moments where we just get some vitamin D and we just feel really good being outside. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. I know know that I am so pumped up. I'm like, just calm down, woman. They don't want to see excited Valentina. And I'm like, oh, outdoor, yay. <laughs> Please tell me I'm not the only one that gets this excited about all the spiffing and the cleaning and oh, I just get so excited about it. Just feels so fresh and new. Also, let me know down in the comments, what are the things that you're struggling with your outdoor space? And if you love this kind of content, so I know whether to share all of the things that we're getting ready to do with our garden. We literally put things on hold for about a year. We literally did nothing nothing since we told you guys about all the mistakes that we had made in our own space last year. Yeah, no, we didn't do anything. So we're gonna be fixing those this year and I'm determined to get them fixed. So let us know if that's something that you're interested in and then we'll make sure to share all that with you. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.